I request Dr. Rupesh sir to share his views about the scope of community medicine. Why one should choose community medicine? Over to you, sir. Okay, thank you, Dr. Vekatesh. I would like to start off by first describing who is this whole speciality suited for? Every speciality, in some sense, selects people with a certain set of attributes. And I think it is important to understand uh, what kind of individuals are best suited for community medicine before we go into the why of community medicine. So from my observation, I have identified a few sets of attributes which a community medicine specialist or practitioner must possess. So ideally, they should be analytical because you need to process data from various sources in order to investigate a problem or to offer solutions. You must be socially aware because the social realities will obviously influence practice as well as strategies uh, that you come up with. You need to be patient and have a long-term outlook because most of the interventions take several years to either yield any kind of benefit or uh, to deliver any results. You need to be humble and adaptable or flexible because at the same time, you may have to interact with marginalized groups as well as influential leaders. And you have to realize that you are just one small part of a larger system. You need to have excellent people skills. And this includes communication skills, emotional EQ, interpersonal skills, etc. You will have to interact with and deal with a diverse range of people. You must be committed to justice, fairness, and empowerment because many issues in health are actually issues of justice. You must be hardworking and persistent. For instance, if you are engaged in say tribal care or in primary care in a difficult setting, you may have to walk several kilometers to re reach a remote location. Or if you were to talk about persistence, you will not obviously get a person to change in the first attempt. You may have to try various approaches before succeeding to either convince other people or to bring about some kind of meaningful change. So you need to be both hardworking and persistent. So I would like to caution that uh, you should not choose this speciality if you are a creature of comfort. And if you want to work in an air-conditioned office or are uncomfortable sitting on the floor of a hut, for instance, because the laboratory in community medicine is the community. You should be willing to become a part of the community you serve. Now, I'll try and answer the question as to why community medicine. So, one of the obvious reasons is because you like it. But as was pointed out earlier, some people may choose community medicine more as a compulsion because they don't have a choice uh, or maybe they're undecided. So even if you like community medicine, it helps to understand what are the other things why one should possibly choose this speciality. So I'll present a few uh, situations or reasons from my perspective. And I think Dr. Parimal would be able to provide some diverse, different kinds of perspectives to the same question. The first thing is that uh, it allows you to practice multiple disciplines at the same time. And uh, if you are especially a person who is undecided about the speciality, you would like to dabble in, say, obstetrics and gynecology also, general medicine also, pediatrics also, psychiatry also. Choosing community medicine actually allows you to treat a broad range of patients across the spectrum. Now, you may think, well, that's something that you could do with family medicine. But I'd like to point out that community medicine is more than family medicine because dealing with the community is more complex than dealing with the family. And when you are trying to plan a solution to community problems, it requires competence and skills in much more than mere clinical medicine. So you need to have skills in epidemiology, you need to have skills in management, et cetera, et cetera. But the biggest reason which I would like to present is that community medicine in my understanding is something like a master key, which provides unmatched flexibility and allows one to smoothly transition from one focus area to another. Now, this could depend on personal interest or circumstances. For instance, in my own case, when I originally joined post-graduation at CMC Valor, my primary interest was to complete my post-graduation and go back and serve in an area of need, which 
at the time was a tribal area maybe in orissa or another such uh, location but somewhere along my training period for some reason i lost interest in clinical medicine now that would have been disastrous if i were in some other specialty but for me i was able to then switch to something else which was to become an academician and i chose then the opportunity of working in medical colleges as faculty so suppose you choose to be involved in clinical practice now sometime later you lose interest for some reason some people call this a midlife crisis maybe you have a similar such experience or maybe especially for uh, ladies sometimes after marriage the situation might change uh, so depending on your circumstance or your change in personal interest you may want to then look at something else within community medicine you can seamlessly transition from one focus area to another without having to do another specialty so you can move from clinical practice either as a primary or secondary care physician and you can go into full time or part time research and especially because you have a background in epidemiology and biostatistics you will be preferred over individuals who lack that background you could also move into administration if you have a knack for such things all national programs require managers and administrators at various levels and there also community medicine graduates are preferred for these kind of roles you could of course be involved in the health system at both the state and national levels a lot of times it is frustrating i remember a question which was asked of me when i was uh, planning and preparing for post graduation in community medicine i had mentioned to an acquaintance that i wanted to work in an area of need so that person said but they will only a small set of individuals will benefit from you and that's a kind of got me thinking and therein comes the other option that you have you can get involved in policy health related policy decisions are largely based on inputs received from various sources and graduates with an interest in this area can get involved in policy making more easily than other specialists and especially if you have previously worked in an area of need you will have a very good sense of the ground realities and the policy will be that much more robust so that's something which you can consider social activism and justice i already mentioned that a lot of issues in health are actually issues of justice so those of us who are deeply interested in social issues would probably want to get into this a lot of times this may require moving away a little bit uh, and getting involved in human rights uh, trying to work with marginalized people and because many health issues have a social basis it's not an unusual area for people with a community medicine background and if you work in this field for some time you may eventually see it transit into a policy change so that's another area environment especially with climate change and health being a hot area right now literally and figuratively uh, it is also likely to gain importance in future and we already have issues like air water soil pollution Uh, these are issues for which we need solutions and if you want you can diversify and go into those areas environmental health occupational health is one area where graduates may focus especially if you wish to work in a factory setting or work in industry nutrition you could go into uh, nutrition especially uh, previously we were talking about protein energy malnutrition now we're facing a double problem of both pm and obesity and a lot of the non communicable diseases have a strong nutritional aspect to it and you can actually choose to just focus on those areas infectious diseases especially with the emergence of new diseases reemergence of existing diseases antimicrobial resistance is a key focus area and you can try and get additional training in infectious diseases i am not sure it is offered within india but there are opportunities available abroad and ncds is a major cause of morbidity and mortality both in globe uh, in india and globally and we are likely to share a disproportionate burden of disease ncds and related areas especially research in ncds is an upcoming thing and it's unlikely to become a area which will not be relevant 
in the near future. Medical education, it is where I am currently focusing. And in most medical mm -hmm. colleges, the reality is that community medicine faculty are very active members of the MU, that is the medical education unit. And typically, the community medicine faculty play a key role in training of medical graduates. One of the reasons is that community medicine faculty engage with uh, trainees, that is the MBBS graduates, right from first year until uh, their final year part one, and thereafter in internship. No other department actually has such an extensive association with students. So it's kind of natural for people in community medicine to kind of branch out into medical education as well. You could also go into health economics, which basically is uh, dealing with the economic evaluation of health interventions. For those who are technologically inclined, there is a technology and health interface. So telehealth, mHealth, that is mobile health, app development, uh, GIS, uh, and health. All of these areas are areas with a lot of potential. And the native familiarity of postgraduates in community medicine with computers and software, especially uh, software which is used to analyze data uh, would give them an edge compared to others because you already have a familiarity with these uh, technologies and systems. Data analytics. So data analysis is a big area in general and within the sphere of medicine, it is now an upcoming area. Those with uh, community medicine background would definitely leverage their knowledge of epidemiology and biostatistics to transition to a health data analyst role. And uh, we also have something called big data, which is coming up. One of the new buzzwords is blockchain. Blockchain is coming in. Artificial intelligence is coming in. And a lot of these things require uh, familiarity with technology. Since we are by nature expected to deal with these things uh, as part of our training and our routine work, we definitely have an advantage over others. Of course, you could get into those areas without a community medicine background. But having a community medicine background definitely gives you an edge over others. You could also opt for consultancy. This could be at the national and international levels. And it's an attractive career goal for many people. And it's easier for community medicine graduates to gain entry into prestigious organizations like the WHO, UNICEF, uh, at the international level, and agencies or organizations within India, uh, like PHFI, for instance, any of the ICMR uh, or government uh, bodies. So if you look at it, and this is not a comprehensive list, there are other things also which you could get into. And the benefit of being a community medicine graduate is that you can easily transition. You can segue from one into another. You, get, uh, you feel that you are not making much headway in one field. You can easily transition back to something else. And you don't have to acquire a brand new qualification post-graduation to do all this transitioning. 